Today's experiment is called the mole, and in that experiment, we'll be looking at how we go about getting a number of items without counting them directly. So, you know, if you wanted to get a dozen eggs, you just go and get a dozen. You would get a box that has 12 in it. You look in the box to make sure there's 12, and you know you got 12. But what if you needed a thousand or a million or an Avogadro's number, like 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of an item? How do you exactly do that? And this gets us back to the idea of a molar mass. And so we're gonna be sort of developing that idea uh, using sort of common objects like grains of rice and beans. So that's the first part of our experiment. Now in the second part, it's kind of interesting. What we're going to do is just weigh out a mole of different substances and compare what they look like. And you'll get the, hopefully get the distinct idea that a mole of each substance looks very different and it's not sufficient just to scoop it out and use that quantity in a reaction. You actually have to know how much material is in there in order for the reaction to take place. And so that means you'll have to weigh it and that's where the concept of the mole is really important. Okay, so our first job in this experiment is to figure out what the mass of beans is in this cup. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how much one bean weighs by averaging the mass of 20 beans. And we're gonna use that mass. That's similar to the grams per mole concept. We're gonna use that number to figure out how many beans are in this cup. And then we're gonna see how close we are. By calculating the approximate amount and then counting and comparing the results. So here we are at the balance. This will be the mass of the empty cup. And now I'll add the beans to it. And that's 165, right, 0.971 grams with the beans in it. And we'll calculate the mass of the bean simply by subtracting those numbers. Next, what we'll do is we'll take these 20 beans and get their mass uh, on the balance. And we'll use that to calculate the mass per bean. Now, you notice that some of the beans are big and some of the beans are small. But we have a large enough sample, uh, we should be able to determine a relatively accurate average mass. So to get the mass of the beans, what I'll do is I'll tear out the mass of the beaker and I'll just add the beans to it. And that's the mass of 20 beans. Next, what we'll do is we'll count and it'll be up to you in the lab to do the determination of the number of beans by calculation. And then I'll also separate out piles of beans in groups of 20 so that you can count the beans as well. So I hope you appreciated that and you got to count all those. I won't tell you how many there were. You'll just have to figure it out by watching the video. Uh, and now what we'll do, and the, and the rest of the worksheet is calculation. You'll calculate the ex, what you estimate the number of beans to be using the average mass of one bean. And then uh, you'll look at the actual number of beans and compare those numbers. So for part two of this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out or estimate the number of grains of rice. We'll throw those guys away, huh? The grain, that's not exactly rice, is it? We're going to estimate the number of grains of rice in this beaker, right? Uh, 
Now you notice the grains of rice are much smaller, so we're not actually going to count them. We're gonna go ahead and weigh a certain number of them, okay? And then we'll do the same thing we did with the beans uh, to get an average mass of a grain of rice, and we're gonna have the mass of the rice in the beaker, and then we'll be able to calculate the number of grains of rice inside this beaker. So we're here at the balance and we will tear it out. Make sure it gets a zero on it. We'll put the cup on there. Now you have the mass of the cup. And then I'll add the rice to it slowly. your mass of your rice in the cup. So again, you'll get the mass of rice by subtraction. Now it says to uh, count out 30 grains of rice, but I'm actually going to do 50 and then we'll use that. That'll give us a little bit better of an estimate. So when you calculate the average mass or the mass of one grain, right? You'll not divide by 30, but we'll divide by 50. All right, so that is 50 grains. There's two piles of 20 and a pile of 10. And there were some broken ones in there. So for some of these, I kind of put little broken pieces in there, but I'm trying to get it to be for whole grains of rice. And now we'll go over the balance and get its mass. So we have an empty beaker and I'll tear that out. And then I'll add 50 grains of rice. Make sure I got it all. Yeah. And that's what it weighs. Okay. And again, you know, we're going to be doing significant figures, right? So keep track of the number of significant figures in that answer. Okay, so uh, what this next part is, is uh, it asks us to measure out uh, one mole of each substance. So we have copper, sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, and tin powder going from left to right, just as it's on your worksheet. And so a lot of times people get stuck thinking about, oh gosh, how much is one mole of material, right? So what I'm gonna do though, if you think about it, for copper, if you look on your periodic table, it says that the molar mass of copper is 63.55 grams. So in order to get one mole of material, you have to weigh out 65 or 63.55 grams, and that'll give you one mole. So what I've done is I've sort of lined them up and I try to make it uh, so you can see the numbers in general, just so you can do a comparison. And after I put the mole of material in each beaker, your job will be, I'll zoom in, and your job will be to estimate the volume and also to sketch the relative amount. So this view that you're going to get at the end will help you draw the sketch with the relative amounts of material. And I'll try to remove some of the distracting material in the background so that you can see it a little bit better. So I had to change, those are 100 mil beakers, but um, I had to change the beakers because they weren't quite large enough. This is the copper. I'll bring it up close so you can see it. That's what copper, elemental copper looks like. Um, best described as having a copper color, right? And you can kind of see the volume. I'll, I'll get a close up of that. And then this is salt, table salt, sodium chloride. And then this is actually sodium bicarbonate, uh, but it's a reagent grade one. It's not the bicarbonate you get at home. It's much more powdery. And this is tin, metal. Oh, it's not. I'll level it out for you there. All right, and you can see the volume there, just approximately. 
So I'll get a little bit of a close up on each one of these so you can see the volume. But that's what they look like relative to each other. And that represents one mole of each substance. Okay, so now I'll come in close on each one of these. You can see the copper is actually below the 20. The 20 is the volume we want to look at. The 60 is uh, measured from the top if you're pouring out. And then this is the sodium chloride. And this is the sodium bicarbonate. And this is the tin, and I didn't quite get it leveled out still, but it's pretty close. Yeah, that's about where it's at. Okay, and again, we're measuring from that mark, the 20. So it's between the 20 and the 40. You have to estimate that volume. Again, use significant figures, estimate the next place. This one is uh, very close to 60, right? This one's around 40, and this one is under 20. So that mark, that lowest mark being 20 mils, means that the actual volume of copper is between zero and 20, maybe about 10, okay? Again, use significant figures recording numbers. That's one of the things each of the labs gets graded on.